Hey guys, I want to talk about some discrete random variables. So I want to start on page 5, number 22. If you look at back at problem on, on page 4, number 22, it's the same thing, so you can cross it out. So I just wanted to leave myself some room. Now, I mentioned this before, so I apologize for my redundancy. Okay, given that they said right here that we have values y are produced between 0 and 1, it's a uniform distribution, we're talking about literally that this is going to be a square. Not bad, bro. Okay, now, so here is 1, here's 0, here is 1, and we know the area under this curve has got to equal 1. So with that being said, 1 times 1 is 1. So now, as I look at this, to answer this probability. Now, do I truly need to draw a model for this? The answer is no, but I'm going to draw it for you anyy So if this is 0 0.5, 0 0.4 is about here, so less than or equal to is about here. So less than or equal to is going to be in the orange that I've shaded. So that's going to be 0.4. Now, here, less than 4 is still going to be shaded, but it's not going to include 0.4. So as I stated um, earlier today, since we're talking about area under the curve, y equals 0.4 is not an area. It's the destination. It cuts it in half. And we know mathematically speaking, the only difference between this, these two, is the or equal to portion. So, because this is not an area under the curve, the answer is going to be exactly the same. I also think of it in a different way, though. The probability of it being exactly that um, on point 0.4, you might want to think about it mathematically, that it's so small that it's going to be equal to point 0.4 that when you add it to the point 0.4 from there, or subtract it, I should say, from the point four on, on part A, it's so small that you're gonna that what you're gonna subtract, it's not gonna make a big difference. I mean, it might be exactly point zero 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 four. Well, if that is point four and we subtract point zero 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 zero, whatever it is, we're essentially subtracting zero from it. So from a mathematician's standpoint of view, I see it that way. Now as we look at part C, part C again, we have a square and we have a square that I'm going to be separating into separate areas. And I'm doing exactly what they say. Here's point 0.1, here's point 0.15. We know how I draw, it's not drawn to scale, so it is what it is. Here is your, from point 0.1 to point 0.5, and here is your point 0.77 to point. 8, 8. We already established that if it's less than or equal to, no one cares. So we need to find that area. Now, is there an easier way of doing that? Absolutely. Here. We know the distance between these two numbers by literally just subtracting them. Okay. It's 0.15 minus 0.1 to get to 0 0.05. The distance between these two, okay, is 0.88 minus 0.77. Why is that? Because we went over this amount and we went up in terms of our height, point 0.1. So we go over, we go up. The area in this in here is going to be that point 0.11 times 1, which gives you that value right there. Or this is going to be the point, I'll just put an arrow there, point 0.05 times my height is 1, which is going to be the point 0.05. Because it won't always be that cute, but it's starting off that way now. Okay, now let's look at the second example that has to do with, no longer has to do with a uniform distribution, because please remember, this was a uniform distribution. So go ahead, pause, and look over this scenario. Now, as we look at this, we have number of houses, amount owned, amount rented, here I'm going to put this in my, put my 
discrete random variables. My numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and my L1. My L2, I'm going to put in um, the probability of owning. And I'm going to put in my L3, the probability of renting. They've said to us, as we look at this, that our variables that represent here, owned, is represented by x, and rented is represented by y, rent or occupied unit. So I'm going to do the histogram first, and I'm just going to set it up, and then I'll show you the pretty one. So remember, we have 0, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we have our probabilities that go from 0 0.003 to 0 0.035. So I'm literally going to ignore this last where it says rent it. Now let's remind ourselves of how we do this. So here's 1, here's 2, here's 3. And our discrete random variables are here, and this is owned. And our probabilities go from, it goes as high as it looks like 22%. So here are my probabilities. So this is going to be, I'm going to make this point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. Could have done a little bit better. Okay. So here, random variable when um, we have one person and that has, so we have, there's one room given that a person occupies the unit. So that's going to be down here somewhere. Okay. And here it's going to be just a slightly higher, not much. Here is going to be 0 0.02 here. Okay, obviously not drawing the scale, but you just keep going. Again, you are continuing your discrete random variables here. So go ahead and pause and then finish it off. So here is the nice pretty one that I wrote down. My nose is going to grow. You know I'm, my graphs never look that good. Now we need to do the same thing for the rented. Okay, so you can see here that for the rented, here's my nice histogram and I um, color coded it for us. Now the next question is describing our differences, any differences between it. We have to look at our socks. Okay. So as I look at the prop, look at this, the number of units on owner occupy, it appears to be approximately symmetric. Whereas here, the renter occupied is slightly, slightly right skewed. It appears that there seems to be more rooms, um, four rooms is the max in terms of the highest probability of renter occupied. Whereas for here, for the owner occupied, it looks like it's going to be six rooms. And the variability, eh, looks about the same. Because for renter occupied, there seems to be one to eight. And for, nope, 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 it has less variability than the owner occupied. Because right here, owner occupied goes from one to ten. Because there is a little smidgen of something happening here so it is a little bit in, more inconsistent okay next what I want to do is to find the discrete random variables um, and given the discrete random variables I'm sorry I want to find the expected um, values to define the means okay so let's remember our formula So here is our generic formula. Remember, it's on your blue sheet. So we're talking about here, owner-occupied again. So that's going to be 1 times 0 0.003 plus 
plus 2 times 0 0.002 plus dot 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 plus 10 times 0 0.035 to give me the expected value of 6.284 rooms. Okay, now go ahead and find the expected amount or the average, and this is actually on the next page, it kind of jumped ahead, for the um, renter. Okay, there we go. And I find this to be 4.187 rooms. Now, next page, I'm sure they asked the questions just like they did before. Explain why there is a difference with them. And the reason why is simply because... Single people or younger people are more likely to um, to rent. They don't need a lot of space. So, because they haven't gathered a lot of belongings because you guys are still young. Okay, now, the next question, which is part C, is asking us to find and interpret the standard deviation of both X and Y. Okay, so here is our formula. And remember, well, here's the expected value. So here is our formula for the variance. Please remember, it is saying that for the variance, it is going to be the summation of the first value minus the mean and square it then times the probability, probability of the um, random variable associated with that probability. So here I've taken it and plugged it in. I want you to try it on your own. And then come back and check your answer. And remember, that's just the variance. That wasn't even the question. I want standard deviation. So eventually, you're going to have to square root it. Now, as I wrap up to try to find the variance of this, so here the random, the discrete random variable one. Okay, so here, remember what's happening. Oopsie, the wrong one. So for the renter, which was the y, we have one minus the mean, which I found, which is one four point one eight seven squaring it, then the probability of it occurring when you have one room, plus 2 minus the mean, square it, times the probability of the occurrence, 0.27, plus dot, 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 then plus 10, as I just jumped to here, and then this is going to be, my parentheses in the wrong place, minus, 4.187 squared times the probability, which is 0 0.003. And then when we do the math on that, our variance is 1.1 .1 and our standard deviation of y, which is the rented amount, is going to be the square root of the 1.0, excuse me, 1.71003, which is going to be approximately 1.3077. Okay, so interpreting this one, this is saying if we have a random amount of renters, that it's going to typically be off by about one point three rooms away from the mean, which is approximately um, 4.187. So 
We're done. Have fun. Enjoy your day off. See you guys on Thursday.